So our next project planning tool is going to be looking at cost breakdown structures. Uh, cost account is what I often refer to them as. What we're going to do is we're going to take the responsibility matrix and we're going to add the pay rates for the people and the budgets of the task and we're going to break down the costs for this project into a cost account. So let's take the responsibility matrix we had before and now let's add in the pay rates for the people here. Uh, Jeremy, £10 an hour. Matthias, £15 an hour. Vincent is £20 an hour. He's the senior person on the job. And now we get people to estimate the effort to do the tasks. So Jeremy is saying he needs 20 hours for his part of the A surface definition. Now, whenever we ask for an estimate, we have to say, how do you know? If we've never worked with these people before, you know, they're engineers. When you ask them for an estimate, they'll give you a number rather than say, I don't know. The good engineers will say, I don't know. The bad engineers will go, oh, don't know, I think it's 20 hours. So when you say, how do you know, you're trying to flush out the fact that they don't know. They're saying, well, I don't know, it's a bit of a guess, really. If they say 20 hours, you say, how do you know? They say, I've done it before. You say, what, exactly like this? With this material? With this supplier for this customer? Using this operating system? And if they're going, yes, 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 you think 20 hours, that's a good estimate. Your project plan is going to be made up of estimates, and you need these estimates to be as accurate as possible. When somebody gives you an estimate, look, if you've been working with them for 20 years, you wouldn't insult them by saying, how do you know? But if you don't know the people, you have every right to say, 12 hours, how do you know that? You've also got to make sure that when people say 12 hours, it is 12 hours, and they're not saying 10 hours, and actually I'll have a couple of hours contingency. We want the honest estimates here, and more of that later. How do we estimate these things? Well, there's three main ways. The bottom-up estimating, that's we're going to look at every task on the work breakdown structure to build up the total from the bottom. And we can do that using comparative estimating, looking at past projects. Or we could just say, well, we did this a similar project for another customer. This is the same size, the same sort of environment. It's going to be the same sort of cost. Or parametric estimates is where you say, well, if I put in 10 terminals, it costs me this much. So if I put in 100 terminals, it's going to cost me 10 times that much. Some industries have typical um, uh, schedules or books where you can look up how long it takes to install lighting in a, in a new building, for instance. At the moment, we are only estimating the work content, the effort to do it. Uh, in another lecture, we'll be looking at estimating the durations. But at the moment, we're looking at estimating the work content. So here's our responsibility matrix. We've added in those 20 hours of work for Jeremy. He gets paid £10 an hour. So the total cost for his part of that task is £200. So we can add up the costs for each task and for each person, and we can get the total effort to do this part of the project. In this case, it's £1,080. So in this picture, the small figures are the hours of effort. The large black figures there are pounds. We've put a pounds in the top left-hand corner. This is building up the cost of the project. We can now add other estimates for materials, equipment, uh, hire, rental, expenses, other costs that are associated with delivering these tasks. Uh, I've put these in red on this slide. For instance, uh, there's £100 associated with defining the A surface. Uh, it could be we need to buy some materials, uh, we need to buy some time on a coordinate measuring machine, whatever it might be. Um, design rear moulding, £400. Prototypes, prototype costs. £600 for the internal fixtures. And we say, well, what's that for? He says, I've got to go to visit the supplier. There's some expenses. There's a hotel bill in there. £600. And in the same way, we need to say, how do you know? 
So when he says there's £100 on the A-surface definition for material costs or coordinate measuring machine hire, we say, how do you know? He says, I've done it before. When he says there's £400 for prototypes, we say, how do you know? And he says, well, I've got three estimates from competing uh, companies, and £400 is, 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 is a good price for this. And when we come to the £600, the internal fixings, we say, you're not staying overnight. You're not going in a first-class hotel. You're going to use a Skype conference call, and we're going to reduce that cost, which will be the next set of uh, video clips. But we're building up a cost account based on work estimates and cost estimates. And when we get an estimate, we need to say, how do you know? OK, so this now is the total cost for the project. For these three tasks, we've built up a total cost of £2,180. We know where the money is being spent. We know which person is spending the money. We could total it that way. And we can see the total for the tasks as well. We have a complete breakdown for the costs of this part of the project. It's a team effort again. We're going to get the team to discuss this. We're going to get them to estimate the hours of effort. You know, when they say 20 hours, how do you know? I don't know. I was thinking, what do you think? And we're getting the team to discuss what the hours of content is, what the costs are. We're going to build up the total cost for the project. OK, this uh, is a paper example. Uh, in reality, you might use a, a spreadsheet. The cost account tells us who is doing what in exactly the same way that the responsibility matrix does. It's telling us where the money is being spent on which task and which person. And when we start to run the project, we'll be able to collect the actuals and compare them with the estimates. So a cost account could well be a spreadsheet. Once you've created it, you might copy that worksheet uh, and call it actuals. And you can put your actual figures in there and then copy it again and call it variances, which is the difference between the estimate and the actual. Now, you can do all of this stuff in Microsoft Project, but many companies manage their project costs using a cost account, using a, a spreadsheet. So a cost account is our, another one of our project planning tools.